Uh, how's your throat? Well, it's actually really quite well. Right. Sounds much better. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Batwoman speaking, who is this? The Wild World of Batwoman is another terrible film from the mind of producer-director Jerry Warren. Well, I might have known you were behind this. Inspired by the success of the Batman TV series with Adam West, Warren made a film that makes that show look like gritty realism. <laughs> on a budget that Bruce Wayne could have found down the back of his sofa. Big deal! Batwoman is the hero needed in a city rife with crime. If you want it, you'll just have to come and get it. Boy, it really seemed like he had a plan. But what about the girls watching? Batgirl 14 to Batwoman. 14 to Batwoman. Witness to hold up the turn to murder. Did nothing about it. These are members of Batwoman's team of Batgirls. We, the girls who are dedicated to Batwoman, take our oath with all sincerity. We, the girls who are dedicated to Batwoman, take our pride with all sincerity. We, the girls who are dedicated to Batwoman, fight against evil with all sincerity. They put a lot of stress on sincerity. Also, their fitness regime. All right, girls, fitness concluded. Apparently, the film's casting director waited outside a strip club that was being raided by the police and offered the newly unemployed strippers a job with slightly less dignity. <laughs> Fortunately, it doesn't impact on performances. If you want to talk, push the button. Button? Batwoman herself is played by Catherine Victor, who had worked with Jerry Warren before on films like Teenage Zombies, and so was probably unsurprised when she had to design her own costume. And when I say design, I mean draw a bat on her chest in eyeliner. Get on with your dirty business. The plot follows perhaps the worst business idea of all time. The Ajax Development Corporation has developed an atomic hearing aid for the really deaf, and it gets better. You see, if you mix a little cobalt with it, boom, and it goes. Because who wouldn't want to put a small nuclear bomb in their ear? If you weren't deaf beforehand, then... <laughs> the hearing aid is the target of masked villain Rat Fink. It'll be a pleasure to pay her back for all the time she's spoiled me in the past. And his gang of comic sidekicks. I'm known as Tiger. Sure you are. And this here's Professor Neon. He's a scientist. They must get past the Batgirls standing guard. Soup? Hot soup, girls. Here it is. Soup. Get your soup, girls. Isn't that delicious? Have some soup. If you don't question the random man with a moustache offering you soup, you deserve to be poisoned. But, as if the threat level wasn't already ridiculously low enough, their main weapon is a happy pill. I don't want another pill. I'm tired of being happy. Which makes people dance. And frankly, there was enough dancing already. Uh, in the background of that scene, you'll notice people waving at the camera. And flipping it off. Which I understand completely. In between her bat organ recitals... Batwoman finds time to save the day by conducting a bat seance. We must call upon an etheric guide. Preferably someone slow enough to bulk up the runtime. I wish to thank you for coming to us. It is perfectly all right. I wasn't doing anything else today. Well, get ready for the worst part of all. Seriously, get ready for the worst part of all. I must emphasize again that it's most important. Moving on, Ratfink kidnaps the Batgirls. I do struggle to take a supervillain seriously when he rolls up his trousers. The girls are taken to Ratfink's underground city. That Leon usually moves real fast when he's going to sing his monsters. I think this footage might be stolen. <laughs> from the Mole People. 
Batwoman rescues the girls. Free the others. Use your magnetic electron divider. But Rat Fink has gadgets of his own. My fabulous body divider will render things most difficult for you. Can't wait to see this. <laughs> I did as you requested, Batwoman. I'm still over there. And at the same time, I'm here. And look, I'm there. And there too. <laughs> And then they all run around for a bit. Warren was sued by the Batman TV show, but won the case, and the film was re-released as She Was a Hippie Vampire. We're vampires, all right, but only in a synthetic sense. And that's the thing about Warren. For a man with absolutely no ear for dialogue, actor Bruno Vesota said it was like memorising a telephone book with pages picked at random, he knew how to write a title. So that's your gimmick. But also how to then make a film that completely fails to deliver on it. That's an understatement. The Wild World of Batwoman is meant to be a comedy, but to be honest, it's just a joke. <laughs> Thanks for watching. To see more of our Jerry Warren film reviews, click here. This is the fourth Warren film we've reviewed. Which should we do next? But not The Incredible Petrified World. That is unwatchable. Thank you very much.